Hi everyone. All of us have the power to concentrate. I mentioned to you in the last episode that the ability to concentrate is our natural instinct. When we were young, we were concentrating. As I mentioned to you in the last episode, observe a child, you will understand how much wrong habits we have picked up. We have learned not to concentrate. Now we have to relearn to concentrate. It is something like um, you have a property, let's say. If you don't use it, you will lose it. What is used less will become useless. If you don't use your computer for a long time, for a year, for example, the battery will drain. If you have a cup of water and if you don't use it, it will become useless. So God has given us so much of uh, concentration and focus, so much of memory. The only thing is we have not developed it. We have not improved it. The law of nature is very clear. Either a thing grows or it dies. There is no question of status quo. You plant a tree, you grow it, the tree will grow. You don't grow it, the tree will die. If the plant is there, neither growing nor dying, we will remove it. So is our capacity, right? While talking about um, focus and concentration, our mind definitely needs rest. Now what happens just because you can work with your hands and you work continuously, become tired. Same thing happens to the mind. Now people say that mind has unlimited capacity. It's not correct. Mind has a limited capacity. Right? You need to engage and disengage. There is always a period of engagement and a period of withdrawal or disengagement. While studying or while focusing on any project, you need to understand the period of engagement and the period of withdrawal. As I mentioned to you, these episodes are useful not only for a student, but for anybody. Let's say that you are working in a project, you are a project engineer or you are a student or you are a writer. You need to understand the limitations of your brain. You should also understand that you should be a friend to your mind and the mind can be friendly to you. Right? So. Long ago, when I was uh, teaching time management in the initial stages, I used to talk about what is called a Pomodoro experiment. Pomodoro, you know, Pomodoro, if you see the picture, those days, this is a kind of a timer. Uh, nowadays, your timer is installed in your smartphone itself. This you can rotate and fix the time for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is. I used to teach my trainees using these Pomodoros, let's say that you have a project, you set your timer, this Pomodoro, for about 25 minutes, let's say. And until it rings, you are not going to look here or there. The same thing can be done with your smartphone. Have a timer for 25 minutes. Switch off the uh, 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 telephone uh, system or you can put it in the uh, flight mode, right? And switch off your SMS, WhatsApp, everything. For 25 solid minutes, you're going to concentrate only on that. At the end of 25 minutes, take a break. Five minutes, you can go engage yourself in some activity. So there is a, always a period of engagement and a period of withdrawal. When you come back to this, your job, your project, you'll come with fresh energy. While on this, I will also 
mention two other things. Make a note of it. Instant gratification and delayed gratification. Make a note of this. Instant gratification and delayed gratification. Instant gratification is you want to do something immediately. Let's say that you are working on a project and you are subscribed to a, a, a large number of um, YouTube channel. You get a cling sound, ting sound. Immediately you stop it and take your mobile and go through that. Or a, a, a message comes or a WhatsApp message comes, cling, then you go through that. This is instant gratification. Delayed gratification is conditioning your mind to ensure that whatever may be the temptation, I will not uh, attend to that. I will delay the gratification. Now, this instant gratification and delayed gratification was a subject of uh, studies in Stanford University. It's called um, Stanford Marshmallow Experiment. A researcher called Walter Mischel in 1972 conducted this experiment. She went to a school where there are about 40 students and the researcher gave each student a marshmallow, a sweet, let us say a chocolate and told the students, if you want to eat this marshmallow or a chocolate, you can eat now. But if you can wait, not eat it for about 15 minutes, I will come back and give you those who have not eaten one more marshmallow. And so saying, he left giving them each one marshmallow. Okay. And without the knowledge of these students, cameras were installed in that room to observe what these children were doing. Some children waited for some time and started eating because they were not able to resist the temptation, instant gratification. And those other students who restrained themselves, some of them put their head down, some of them closed their eyes and resist the temptation of eating the marshmallow for some time. And 15 minutes later, the researcher returns to the classroom and those students who had not eaten, they were given one more marshmallow. And the experiment was not over. He took two tests that day, IQ test, intelligent quotient, and another test, emotional quotient, EQ test, IQ test and EQ test. And he had the test score with him. 15 years later, he was tracing those students, keeping a watch, keeping a track on those students and went and interviewed how the same students were uh, uh, performing in their life. And to his surprise, he found those students who delayed their gratification, who did not take the chocolate or sweet immediately, were in a higher status in society. Their um, uh, GRA and um, uh, test results were better, right? And they were performing much better than those students who took the uh, sweet immediately. And he conducted once again a test, the IQ test and EQ test. When they were students, those students who had more IQ but less EQ, and the same students he tested now, IQ and EQ comparison, that is intelligent quotient and emotional quotient, even though the IQ was more, they were performing less than those students who were whose EQ was more. The result of this experiment is, if you can resist your temptation, your sensory organs, if you can exercise the control, you perform better. The same thing applies to concentration. As I mentioned to you in the previous episodes, with all of our uh, capacity, we should be able to produce much more result. But unfortunately, our concentration is dissipated. 
We have to bring back that natural talent, that natural ability to concentrate back to us once again. So my dear student, from today, you start this exercise once again. Setting aside a period of 20 minutes or 25 minutes, focus all your attention. Before you start that session, you complete all your work. If you have got a phone call to be made, make a call. If you want to go and meet somebody, do that. If you want to take a car, walk, do that. But for these 20, 25 minutes, you are going to tell yourself, no, I'm not going to stir out of this place. Every day you do that. Over a period of time, this becomes a habit. As I mentioned to you, concentration and habit formation are very closely related. Try this exercise. Over a period of time, you should be able to concentrate for a long period of uninterrupted time. If you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and press the bell button. We'll meet you in the next episode.